Good morning, folks. We've got looks at space weather, another notable earthquake, sea ice trends and what they really mean, and an excellent story on solar forcing of upper-level winds. But we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star where solar flaring in the M-class range has continued. We've been stuck in this mid-level activity area for several days. No significant CMEs produced even when the lower coronal region pops. The eruptive activity is not breaking out. The sunspots are producing a fair number of solar flares across the disk, in addition to filament destabilizations, but they are minor. We will continue to monitor the active regions, including the newly growing group on the south. The bigger set of sunspots beginning to depart has been pretty quiet. As the interaction and proximity close the gap, the largest central region began to decay. We still have a plethora of sunspots, however, but the potential for major solar flares is very low right now without any further development of those sunspots. Moving next to seismicity, where the most notable earthquake of the day was not a big deep one this time, but a rare event off the coast of Australia, very close to the south magnetic pole. Five pointers here are about as rare as they are in the eastern United States. Up next, we'll hit a paper describing the ice loss heat feedback effect of lower albedo at the polar region. What this article doesn't mention is that this is exactly what will end up causing the trend reversal to cold. It chills the oceans, shuts down circulations, and is the precursor process of a Heinrich event. Remember, losing ice at the polar region ends up chilling the world. It's Earth's self-correcting process for rapid changes, and the faster it gets warm, the harder the swing back will be. Up next, we're looking at the jet streams, the upper level winds which flow around mid-latitudes and another one at the polar region. We've seen several papers before on how solar activity affects the mid-latitude jet stream, generally amplifying it, causing less weakness and a faster flow. But now we have the first study of solar activity on the polar jets here, and the effect is precisely the opposite. They found large proton events slowed down the polar jet, the reverse forcing of what happens to the mid-latitude jet streams. Very interesting finding here, and yet another way the sun subtly impacts the lower atmosphere. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.